Hello, AI fans. Welcome back to Watercolor Wednesday. This is Kendra Krebs, guest artist this week, bringing you a really fun Easter wreath. Now, this was Laura Wilworth's idea. So thank you, Laura. I am making this one just for you, and I hope that everybody else enjoys it. I think it turned out very cute, and I want to show you how to do it today. So we are going to grab what we're going to use to make it. And I am first going to use the Basket of Blessings set, and it comes with all these really darling Easter stamps. I'm gonna be using this little one, and the Wishing You a Blessed Easter, and then all, or not, I'm not gonna use all these guys, but I am gonna use this stamp. And then also, uh, the Watercolor Foliage set four, I'm gonna use these two vines. The Teeny Tiny Grass, which I use in almost every video. <laughs> and um, on the mini water or er, watercolor mini flower set, I'm gonna use this little guy. He almost looks like leaves in a way, but I'm gonna use him as a flower. And then also, I am going to use this little stamp right here, and this is in the watercolor flower set too. Now, if you don't have all these foliage and flowers, don't worry about it. You can use any flowers that you have on hand, any foliage that you have on hand. It really doesn't matter. Just kind of grab what you have. And I mean, there's no need to go buy the full set just to get one of the flowers I'm using in this video, unless you love the set and you know that you'll use it. So um, no need to do that. If you have something that will work, use that, okay? So I'm going to start with our sweet little um, bunny lady. <laughs> I'll just call her a bunny lady or a bunny girl. And I'm going to ink this using the 969. So I'm going to ink her whole body, her whole stamp with the 969 on her feet and dress and all of that. You can see I've used her several times in preparation for this video. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna stamp her. Oh, you can see I put a little circle, same thing as last video, I just used a ribbon um, to make the circle and a pencil that I'm gonna erase at the very end, okay? So I'm gonna huff on her just because I've been holding her now for a second. So I'm going to stamp her right down and she does not need to be perfect, but I do want a nice solid image. You could use a, you know, a um, one of those stamp perfects or anything like that, a misty. You could use one of those if you wanna make sure it's, you know, in the right spot. It doesn't have to be perfect. I generally will line up this foot with the circle and then this foot is just gonna kind of be out of the wreath, but we are still going to try to follow the guide here that we made. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my little row of baby bunnies and I'm gonna use that same 969 and only color four of them. Now it wouldn't matter which four I chose. I just kind of chose these. Um, I do not wanna get any uh, characteristics of the other bunnies, just these four. So wipe off anything that, um, you know, is on the other ones that you might have accidentally colored. Okay, now I'm going to put these little guys just right in the bottom. And if they're a little dark, it's not a big deal. Um, I don't know if they will be, but if that happens, yeah. So a little bit dark, that's fine. Um, I'm going to be coloring these in with the brown anyway. So... You know, this one has a little bit darker ears. I, I don't mind, that's totally fine. Okay, now before I do anything with them, I'm gonna get her dress colored because as you can see in my sample, her dress has all the little flowers and foliage in it. And to do that, we need to mask out all the areas that are not the dress so that we can stamp this and not get um, the inks outside of our target area. So I'm using the Inkadu sticker paper and I stamped her down on the paper. You can see there's a blue side. You wanna stamp on the white side. This is just washi tape that I used to close off the cut line um, that kind of opened up the area. 
Um, so I, I closed it just to help me kind of guide her a little easier. See, you can see <laughs> that's open. Okay, so I'm gonna put this right over, and I'm still in screen, okay. So I'm gonna put this right over her dress to use as my guide, just like that. So I have fussy cut out the areas of the dress that I don't want, or that I do wanna stamp. Everything else is the sticker paper. So I can freely stamp into the dress and not have to worry that I'm gonna get the ink on other parts of her body. So I'm gonna take my little flowers, these ones, which are the little circle. Okay, oops. <laughs> if your stamp comes off like that, I, I love, I kinda love when this happens because I can show you. Um, so I'm just gonna take a little bit on my finger, not a ton, I mean, you can use like a little paper towel or something, um, but you're gonna get just a little bit of that ink and then just kinda wipe it off just wipe it off and I just used a little towel here and that will just get any dust and debris like off of the stamp okay so get that off and then it will stick like it was new so you can see when I moved it before it was moving and now it's not moving so you can use like a little um, cloth or something like that and just kind of um, renew the cling okay little tip for you so i'm going to take number 725 and i'm going to just ink a few of these flowers for her dress i don't need the whole stamp because i'm just going to ink little areas in here for the floral spots and you can come right to the edge because you've made this wonderful masking um, barrier so it's not going to be high stress you know when you don't have a mask it's like oh you know you want to you want to be so careful about where you're stamping and all of that and when you have a mask you really just you can just go for it okay so I do want maybe I'll do a little bit down here um, I do want the dress to be a white dress with flowers so it's going to be just, um, you know, spread out flowers. Now I, I was doing, um, I, I have filled it in and maybe I'll, maybe I've got a little sample right here. Yeah. So when I was kind of planning for this video, um, I, I make a whole bunch of like different ones and then just kind of decide which one I want to do from there. But, um, in this sample, uh, I did fill in the dress completely and it is so cute. So, uh, what you would do instead, if you want the filled in dress is to just completely fill it in. So your flowers, you would do more flowers and then more foliage to really fill in her dress. So there's another idea. And then I'm gonna take that little leaf. So I'm gonna use this for green this time and then I'm gonna come back to it and use it with purple. But I'm gonna use the 177 and I am going to just put in a few of these little leaves. And I love these little these little leaves, even though they're in the, um, the flower set, we generally use them as flowers. Um, but this is so nice for these little tiny areas that you want to do some detail work or have smaller um, clusters. This is so nice for that. Okay, and if you don't have a really tiny one, you can always um, like freehand just a few leaves in here because when you touch it with water, it will disperse um, the image. So it's not going to be harsh unless you do like a whole bunch and you're using a whole bunch of ink and all that, you know. Um, it is obviously easier to use the stamp, <laughs> but if you don't have it and you really wanna do some of these really dainty leaves, just try it, see how it works for you. And um, if you don't like it, you know where to go to get them. Okay. All right, so now I am going to add my water while this is on. So the sticker paper is going to remain on until I finish adding all of my water 
to my flowers and foliage in her dress. And that, again, just kind of helps protect it, helps distribute the um, color throughout without it being um, at risk for coming over the lines where we don't want it to. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the green. So I did the pink first, then the green. And as you can see, I'm just dabbing. Just little dabs and adding a little water and then moving on. The second you think, is that enough water? The answer is yes, move on. And then you can always come back at the end and add more if you feel that you need to, okay? So I'm gonna take this sticker paper off now and just do this gently because your water paper, watercolor paper, it is, um, you know, it has a lot of strength to it, but it is still paper and sometimes sticky things can rip your paper. So just be, be careful, be cautious and just gently pull off the sticker paper. And you can see now we have her little dress. Isn't that cute? I love this technique so much. I use it a bunch and I hope that you use it as well. Now we can color in the rest of um, her and the bunnies here. So we're gonna take the brush and a little bit of water and just start pulling out this brown in her lines using the water. And again, we wanna leave a little bit of a, of a highlight there because she is in the sun. Hopefully it's you know coming along to springtime, the sun's coming out. We do wanna have a little bit of a, of a highlight there. Same thing with her face. So um, I will come back and add, oops, <laughs> my brush is flying. I will come back and add additional details to um, kind of darken up the shaded areas. But right now I just wanna focus on getting in my highlights and using um, this as a guide, okay? So I'm gonna get her ears pulled in. Same thing on her little legs and feet. I don't wanna to do too, too much, and I always wanna leave a highlight because this part of her foot is coming out from under the dress, and there will be a highlight on top of her feet. Same thing with these little bunnies. I am just going to quickly begin to pull out the color from the lines, and I wanna give them little white blazes down the front of their faces. So you can do this or you can color them a different color. Um, you can do gray. So um, in a lot of the videos that we show you, we show you how to make a multi-dimensional gray color using the, uh, I think it's five, yeah, 565, which is this blue, and I'm not gonna use it in this video, but um, this blue and then the 969 brown. If you mix those together, you can get a gray. That technique is in a whole lot of videos. So I believe that, if you've been watching for a while, you would recognize that. And then, um, but yes, you can do them in gray, you can do them, wouldn't it be cute to do them in pastels or something along those lines? So, okay, I am just lightly pulling out some of this color and I will come back in and add more once that's dry. But I wanted to kind of get those shadows pulled out a little bit so that um, it's completely dry when I come back to add in the darker elements. If it is not dry, you will not be able to get a color layering effect and it will look really one dimensional and it will also be, um, you won't get, it, it'll just disperse out and look like one color still. So you won't get kind of a shaded effect. Okay, now we're gonna put, use our palette and 606. So this is 606. And I'm going to take that and begin to color her apron here. I'm not gonna be super careful, I just wanna get the color in. If I touch those lines, then I'm going to begin to pull out some of that brown, which is not a big deal. If it happens, it happens. But I do kind of want to avoid that so that I can get a nice purple apron, okay? Same thing with her little bonnet here. I'm going to just lightly put in the purple. Same thing down in here. This inner area right there, that will be darker when I come back 
because it is the interior of the hat. So that's going to be facing away from the sun and it's going to be naturally darker in there. These are the ties for the apron. So I'm going to put a little bit of color on there and then I'm gonna come back and do the same thing with her little bow. I like to jump around a little bit. <laughs> you know, if you're somebody who, you know, wants to do the whole bonnet first, including the bow and all of that stuff, by all means, there is no right and wrong way to do this. Um, there is only your way. <laughs> so it's not a big deal. I forgot her little, her little dress there. So I filled that in just a touch. And then I'm gonna come back in and get her pocket right there. All right, so now I'm going to add in the darker areas. Now, because this was completely dry, I can do that. If it was not dry, there's no way I would be able to get that darker color to layer on top of the lighter color. Okay, so going to put darker in the folds of the bows. And then also this interior area is going to be darker. And I'm just grabbing, you know, if you use less water, you're going to get a more concentrated color. And then down here by the bow, this is also going to be a little bit darker since it kind of curves under. Okay. Are we all together and following? <laughs> So now I have the purple on my brush. I'm just going to go ahead and color one of the purple eggs since I'm already into this color. You can go step by step if you want to and just do um, all of her outfit first and then all of you know the eggs next or the basket or whatever uh, and then just go you know bit by bit. Or you can kind of think ahead and be like, okay, I know I'm gonna use purple for, you know, the eggs or what have you. So I'm just going to color that now. Okay, so I want to smooth out this line just a little bit. I just grabbed a touch of water and went ahead and just smooth that out just a touch. All right, now the little flowers up top, these are going to be pink, the 725. So 725, and I'm not going to need a ton of that. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this and place it into my flower up top or my two flowers up top and just very gently put those in. Now the center of that flower is so tiny so I'm just going to use um, 993 the detailed tip and just put the yellow into it using the detail tip as opposed to trying to brush that in. That's just too much. So I'm gonna use 177. Am I still on screen? Yes, okay. 177, I'm trying to be closer. I had a couple comments about um, it being a little bit easier to see when I'm closer. So I'm trying to kind of zoom in a little bit so that you can see and still trying to make sure that I'm on screen. <laughs> so if I kind of pause and look, that's why. Okay, I'm gonna take that 177 and just put into the leaves right there. All right, now that I have my pink out, I'm gonna go ahead and just put in the next little egg here. Since I'm already kind of working with that, and we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, same thing with the yellow, the 993. 993. I'm not going to need much of that yellow. The only yellow thing other than the flowers is going to be this little egg right here. And you can see I am leaving a little bit of a white space at the top, right, for our highlight. It, you know, again, it doesn't matter where in the world you want to leave the highlight. As long as you have that highlight, you are golden, okay? So 528 here. 528 and I will use that for some of the sky later in the project. So I am going to uh, give myself a little bit more. I'm gonna take that and put it into the final egg here. And number 969, 969, which was that same brown we used for all the bunnies. 
And now I'm going to color in the basket and also put in some shadowing into our little bunnies. So I'm going to kind of create a wicker look here, like a little whisk wicker basket. Now, when you do these lines, you need to follow the curve of the lip of the basket, okay? If you don't follow the curve, it will look really, really flat and you will effectively flatten your basket and it will no longer look three-dimensional. So make sure you follow that curve, okay? And she has a little arm under here that is not colored, so we're gonna color that. Sometimes I do that. Do you ever find like the end of the project, one of your, um, you know, people, your, your main images, like doesn't have an arm colored or something? I do that so often. Who else does that? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna come back in and I am going to add a little bit more of a shadow into her arm area, same thing into her face. Up in here, she's gonna have more of a shadow because that bonnet is covering some of her face. I do wanna pull out the color just a little bit more so that I get a nice graduation, and I can do that just using a little bit of water without color, and then I can just kind of wipe off the excess that I don't want, which gives it a really nice graduation from dark to light. And then I'm gonna come into the ears and the closer I am to the body, the darker the color will be. On the ears or any of the extremities, your extremities are gonna be the darkest in the areas near the body or the areas underneath. Same thing with the feet, this is closer to the body so it's going to be darker and then as I come away it will get lighter. Okay, I mean this is the kind of that, um, you know, if, if the sun is up here and it's shining down, all the top areas of, you know, the things sticking out or the face or the arms or any of that, that's all going to be highlighted and then all the areas underneath, those are going to be shadows. Or shaded in. Okay, so you can see uh, we have some nice dimension going on here. I'm gonna just lightly blend this out just a touch. And then we'll go into our little babies. So can you see that color? Yes, the 969. I'm gonna grab more of that. And if you have too much water on your brush, you will notice that you will not get as much of a shading effect as you may want. So just make sure when you're grabbing this that your brush is fairly dry. Not, not like super, super dry, but it is fairly dry enough to where you pick up that color and you deposit it and it doesn't move a whole lot. Like you can see when I put down this color, it's still watered down, but it's not so much that it's traveling. Like I'm not wanting it to travel. And let me just kind of show you close up. So I just dip the brush and then I really wipe that off. So there's a good pinch there to be able to um, have enough water, but not so much where it's running. Okay, same thing here, I'm gonna put this brown in, give him that little blaze up front. And I'm wiping away the number. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, re I'll rewrite it. Okay, so he's gonna have a little bit more in here too. And I'm not gonna spend too much time on these guys. It really doesn't matter because fur is going to look so different just depending on the way that the bunnies are laying and the way that the sun is shining down. So I'm not gonna be too picky on that, but I do want them to have some lighter and darker brown areas. Now I'm going to take that 725 right here, the 725, and I'm gonna put that into their little ears. Oops, up there, that's okay. He can have two pink areas <laughs> into here and right there. Same thing up here, I'm gonna put them into there. And then I'm also going to give them the cute little pink cheeks. 
so cute. I mean, I feel like you have to have the, the pink cheeks, right? Just darling. But like little animals with fur, like would you even see that? <laughs> I'm one of those people who thinks like, would you even notice like a, a bunny like blushing underneath their fur? Probably not, but it's still so cute. Now I'm gonna take my twin tone brown and I am going to darken in the eyes and the nose of every single being on this page, including her. So if you are doing an animal of any kind or a person, you always, 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 always darken the eyes and darken the other features, um, especially the eyes, because if you don't darken the eyes, they will look almost dead. Like you, you really need to darken the eyes. It's going to bring it to life and it's going to, um, you know, give them brighten up that kind of shaded area. If you don't do th do that, like sometimes they can look like zombies and you do want to have that um, nice and bright. So uh, I added a little bit more color to her sleeve. If you really look close, um, it is kind of hard on these more detailed images to kind of pick which areas are the sleeve, which part is the collar, things like that. So I'm gonna take my brown and just fill in the scalloped edge here. You can leave that white if you want to. I kind of like it a little bit darker. Up to you, same thing on her little collar. And then after this, we're gonna be pretty much done with the little guys. And then we can put our sentiment and our um, all of our foliage and flower into the wreath, okay? Now I'm going to take my teeny tiny grass and number 177. This part's gonna go pretty quickly. So I'm just going to put some grass near her feet. Now, um, when you're doing a wreath like this, you don't wanna bring out the grass out here because that will actually take away from the circular nature of your wreath. So although she is out here, we want to keep our foliage and flowers in this circular area, okay? So I'm gonna put a little bit of grass here, but it is still in that circle area. It's just the base of it, okay? And then I'm gonna take my little stemmed flowers, which I don't know if I spoke about these, but these are actually, let me just show you. They're in the same set as that watercolor uh, flower set too with that little heart-shaped wreath um, flower. So this is the other one. I don't think I pointed that out at the beginning, so I apologize. And I'm gonna take 606 with 177 and just put some of that onto the stems. And then I'm just going to stamp in some of these. Don't worry about if you get some colors over here. I think I had a bunch of like color and stuff like on my hands and most of that's going to be chopped. So don't worry too much about that. If it gets like really close, you can take a little bit of water sometimes and try to just wash it out a little bit with like maybe a paper towel or something. You can do some like erasing with water, but generally speaking, it has to be like immediately when it happens. And then sometimes even then, you need to just cover it with a vine or something like that. But we usually can kind of make it work. Just get creative. And I'm going to be pulling out the little grassy areas there. I wanna give them a little place to lay, so I am gonna pull out just a little bit of their brown lines just right underneath those little babies. Now we're gonna do our wreath, okay? So this part is really, really simple. All I'm using are these three stamps, the flower, the little um, circular flower I used on her dress, and then these two little mirrored vines. I'm going to be kind of using both of them to give this the wreath-like look we're looking for. Okay, so I'm gonna take my little flowers and that pink, the 725, I don't think I'm gonna need that until we do the sky, so I'm gonna set that aside. And I'm gonna put in these little 
clusters of pink just all around and you don't have to do them as symmetrical as I'm doing them I will probably come back in then if I see I'm doing something really symmetrically I'll probably just I generally will just kind of stick in a couple more because I like asymmetrical wreaths I don't generally like things that are perfect so I will do that and then remember that little uh, that little stem looking flower that we used for the green on her dress. I'm going to use the purple. I'm not going to clean it off. not going to take the time to do that because it, it really doesn't matter if there's a little bit of green into that purple. And typically this purple is really strong anyway. So there is not going to be, it's going to be able to overpower that green pretty easily. And I'm just putting the purple stamping several times. So this is why we have the rubber because it holds on to that ink so well. And I'm going to put some of these in just kind of near the pink, okay? So you can see I stamped several times before I re-inked getting that dark and light value, which gives us a nice uh, multi-dimensional look. And I'm gonna take now those vines those mirrored vines and just choose one. So I'm going to start with this one and I'll ink this using the 177. And you can ink all or partial if you want to, it doesn't matter. And I'm just stamping this kind of wherever. Now, if you have trouble guiding your vines, which sometimes we do, especially when we're first beginning, you can put the vine point into the corner of your acrylic block and use that as a guide. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to ink partial or full stamp. Sometimes I do partial, sometimes I do full. It depends. Also, it's sometimes a time thing. I'm like, oh, I just want to get these in, you know, so I'll just do partial. And don't, don't um, forget that your paper does move, so you can move this around, okay? And I'm going to take oops, <laughs> the other stamp and ink that and begin to put in some of this other vine. And again, if I want to use the acrylic block as a guide, I'll put it in the corner and use it as a guide. Okay, so we've got our little wreath kind of coming to fruition here. And I'm gonna take my brush and begin to dab. We'll start with the greens and then we can go into the pinks or the purples. We just want to keep them separate. So whenever you start dabbing, you want to stay with one color just so they don't all mix together. Sometimes it's really fun. Like if it's a fall theme and you want the reds and you know the yellows and the oranges to kind of mix together a little bit, uh, do it by all means. Go touch all the colors at one time. That's also a really fun technique. But for this one, I think let's just kind of keep it separate and let those colors shine on their own. So I'm just dabbing and then moving on. Dabbing and moving on. Okay, so now we have our wreath in. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that just fun? And I'm gonna take now and make sure I've got all my little pieces out of the interior. I'm gonna take my sentiment, which is the wishing you a blessed Easter. And I'm gonna ink that with the 969. Sorry, you guys, this is a long video. I apologize. I hope that you've stuck with me thus far. Okay, wishing you a blessed Easter. And I'm gonna make sure that this is as centered as I can. If it's a little bit off, that's fine. It's not a big deal. And there we go. If you need to fill in some of the areas that are a little bit lighter, you can use your twin tone to do that. So maybe like the E and the R. And maybe just a little bit of that S. Okay, so I have my sentiment in and I can add just a little bit of that 528 for my sky. So I just want a touch of this and I'm using 
a good amount of water. So I'm not, I'm not uh, squeezing off the excess this time. I'm using a good amount of water and just dabbing in some of that blue to be my sky. And it's kind of a, it's a suggestion of a sky. It's not going to be like a bunch of clouds and things like that. Unless you want to do that, you totally can. Um, I just want to keep it simple. Go in between her basket here. And I'm just dabbing so that we don't have a really harsh sky area. Okay. And we are almost there. Now we're going to erase out the line that we drew in earlier. I say it all the time, but I want to remind you. I know some of you know what I'm going to say. If you do this when it's still wet, you will rip your paper. I feel I have a duty to say it every time because I still have people tell me that they rip their paper and I always feel so bad. So make sure, please, please, please make sure your paper is dry before you do that. You will thank me. You will be so much happier with what you make if it's not ripped. Okay, I'm going to sign my work because that's what we do. And I'm going to put 20 on there for the year. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something. And if you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. If you have any ideas that you want me to do, go ahead and comment below and I will check that out. I definitely want to see what you guys want to see. So stick with us and subscribe if you haven't. Check us out on Instagram and I will see you next time. Bye.